Car robberies persist in Oxford, but more than just your money may be at risk. But first, how the legacy of Parkland, the deadliest school shooting in U.S. history, continues to impact Talawanda schools. Welcome to Oxford Weekly News. I'm Kat Bojack. Thanks for tuning in. A year ago, Talawanda students walked out alongside thousands of other high schoolers in response to the shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida. This week, two Parkland survivors came to Oxford to share their experience. Oxford Weekly News' Houston Vic has a look at how their story has impacted high schools across the country and across the street. The first time Alex Wynn heard gunshots was February 14, 2018, at his own school. The deaths of 17 teachers and students ushered in a new normal for Wind and fellow survivor David Hogg. The change has not been an easy adjustment for the survivors. Almost having to relive what happened that day, especially when things like the fire alarm goes off or you know, even just a book dropping in class is something that can trigger uh, a, ton, a ton of students. Hogg and Wynn came to Miami as part of the university's lecture series. They discussed student activism as well as proposed overhauls to the current system. These changes include better counseling services in schools and voting in more politicians dedicated to stopping gun violence. Hogg blames the inaction of politicians on the differing perspectives between elected officials and high school students. Current lawmakers, um, except for a select few within the, the very um, young freshman class in Congress, have never had to go to school with the fear of gun violence on their way to school. They've never had to live in fear of gun violence within their school. Not long ago, Talawanda schools only had two resource officers assigned to the five schools in the system. In response to massacres like Parkland, OPD has upped its presence in Talawanda schools by assigning a resource officer to every school in the district. Officer Richard Butler, Talawanda's school resource officer, says thanks to school policies like See Something, Say Something, the administration is able to identify potential threats before it's too late. I do. I think it prevents a lot of harm by somebody and even someone that might be moving towards an event like that. It lets us reach out and give them help before they feel they need to do something like that. Butler also says the administration actively works with students if they want to raise awareness for issues. The school and the student body work together to find the best way to assemble without disrupting the school day. With state money going towards more police and increased security measures, complete with a scanner that checks the background of every potential visitor, Officer Butler believes Talawanda High School is one of the safest places in Oxford. In addition to the active shooter training and other safety presentations, Talawanda also offers other practical skills like first aid classes to its students. Kat? Miami students are drinking a little less according to new figures from the Office of Student Health and Wellness. In a report submitted to the Miami Board of Trustees, the office found reductions in the frequency and intensity of student drinking according to data from student surveys and orientation programs. Modest gains that could grow with time. This trend will continue and if you look 10 years out, that will be that much further along. That, that is the hope and the plan. International applications to Miami University shrank as other regional colleges, UC and NKU, have reversed the decline in foreign students that followed the 2016 election. Applications from China, which represents the majority of international students at Miami, fell 38% since 2017. This coincides with a recent Purdue University study that found that 42% of Chinese international students said their impression of the U.S. became more negative in recent years. This decline in Chinese applicants offset increases from other countries such as Vietnam, Nepal, and Kazakhstan, which jumped from two applications in 2017 to 33 in 2019. Applications from domestic and non-Ohio students have also declined at Miami, leading to a 5% decrease in the overall applicant pool since 2017. Notes from your favorite class thrown to the ground and precious items taken during the night. Residents of Oxford, Ohio should be on the lookout as police say car thefts across the city are on the rise. That is the sound of your car locking. All of my school stuff was just in snow against my tire in this top area. That is an Oxford, Ohio resident whose car was recently broken into. Earlier last week, Isabella D. Camillo was shocked to find her car doors open and her belongings stolen. As soon as I stepped here, 
stuff was all over the passenger side of my car. Dee Camillo lives at Hawk's Landing, an apartment complex. She never thought her car would be broken into. They destroyed all of my semester notes, like my class notes, which that sucked, um, and stole like a bunch of tip money that I got from delivery driving in Cincinnati out of my glove box. So, I mean, it feels like a personal violation because a lot of the stuff in my car is very personal to me. Like even just my backpack had little pins on it and stuff, which that was another thing that got taken. OPD is trying their best to prevent more incidents around the city. Just last week, there were eight thefts that involved motor vehicles. Chief Jones believes the amount of thefts is common for this time of year. As far as thefts from motor vehicle, you know, we're taking anywhere from five to ten of those each week. Obviously, that happens more when students are here. At least the last few weeks, it's been anywhere from five to seven. With students and residents living in a variety of places around Oxford, no car is safe. You know, one night one area is hit, maybe the north end, another night the southern end, or another night apartment complexes. Embarrassment stops some students from reporting the incidents to OPD. I mean, especially after it happened to me, I've had more people coming to me and saying, like, this has happened to me, I just haven't done anything about it or said anything. And I'm like, saying something makes it easier for them to track that this is happening. Although it's advice we hear often, Chief Jones and Isabella DiCamillo both agree that the best way to be proactive is to lock your car doors and store valuables elsewhere. On Thursday, February 21st, Miami University held its Spring Career Fair on campus at Millette Hall. Over 210 hiring organizations were in attendance, allowing students to network with a wide range of employers. Prior to the event, the Center for Career Exploration and Success offered numerous resources that students could use to prepare including LinkedIn and resume workshops that were held at Armstrong Student Center. For graduating seniors, this was their last career fair. Senior finance major Nathan Visley expressed mixed emotions prior to attending the event. There's always going to be a bit of nerve there because it's a huge event and there's a ton of people there and a ton of big companies. But for, for me, I've done it so many times, I'm really excited um, to get to meet some of the companies and I have a couple companies to fall back on if nothing happens. Another networking opportunity for Miami students is coming up on March 14th when the Shriver Center will host the Government, Social Services, and Nonprofit Expo. Miami's Farmer School of Business is planning to offer a new graduate degree in business analytics due to popular demand. The offering will be a one-year post-grad program and FSB says it expects roughly 30 students in its first year. Chair of the Miami Information Systems Department, Skip Benamati, is excited for the program to start. The program is 30 credit hours and is intended to be taken in two semesters. FSB hopes to have students enrolled and taking classes in the program by fall 2020. Former Miami University president and advisor to the Sigma Alpha Mu fraternity, Jerry Miller, passed away on February 16th after a short fight with cancer. Miller started as an economics professor at Miami in 1971. His involvement with Sigma Alpha Mu started shortly after, as he was initiated into the, into the fraternity as a faculty advisor in 1974. So I would just want to tell him thank you. I mean, he was so much help. I mean, a lot of brothers in this fraternity today say, like, the biggest reason they came was because of Jerry. He, um, I mean, he did everything. He was the nicest guy. The fraternity has planned a celebration of life in honor of Miller, which is scheduled to take place this spring. Coming up on Oxford Weekly News, the story of an unsolved rape case. We'll speak with an Oxford Observer reporter who's been working on the story. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Oxford Weekly News. I'm Kat Bojack. Oxford police continue investigating a sexual assault that occurred on February 7th where a Miami student was raped outside her dorm on North Quad. Leanne Stahulik of the Oxford Observer is in the studio to give us more details. So Leanne, what makes this crime unusual? Well, it's unusual in the aspect that the crime occurred outdoors in the middle of the night and the uh, attacker was unknown to the victim at the time. She was just going about her business, she was un not expecting it whatsoever, and somebody just came upon her in the middle of the night and attacked her outside her dorm or her residence. Wow, so what's been the reaction from students, police, I know several students are unsettled by it. 
I mean, we receive these sexual assault safety bulletins, but this is one that people have paid attention to because they noticed the fact that it was an unknown subject, which a majority of sexual assaults do occur with a person that the victim knows. And the most of them occur in residences, which as Chief McCandla said, is usually at the victim or the attacker's residence where these occur. But the fact that it was outdoors on university property is causing a lot of people to be concerned. And I know that they're trying to stay more aware and alert as they go out at night. And I know that the police are actively investigating it because they don't want any more situations like this to occur. Is there a possibility then that the perpetrator is still in the Oxford area? I would say so. I mean, until the police officially arrest a suspect, which at least they have a description to go off of, it's a bit vague. It is a college-aged white male, six feet in height, and a muscular build, which could be any number of students on campus. But the fact that they have a description at all is very helpful in trying to catch the perpetrator and at least making people aware of what they should be looking out for if they see somebody in the middle of the night. Gotcha. Any idea when we'll have more information? Well, since it's an ongoing investigation, police are trying to keep things under wrap, both for the victim's privacy and to make sure the perpetrator isn't aware that there is an active investigation into look, looking into what he's doing and where he's at. So really, I think police are just trying to spread the word to be aware, be alert. When you're outdoors, make sure you're walking with another person. Don't go anywhere alone. And when you're going out, make sure you text people when you get to where you're going and when you're leaving, just so people are aware of where you're at and so that you're aware of your own surroundings, because that's ultimately what lies at the crux of this, is that you are aware of where you're at at all times and who's around you. Gotcha. That's great advice. Thank you so much for coming, Leanne. Thank you. To read Leanne's story and other local news, visit the Oxford Observer online at OxfordObserver.org. After the break, the best pizza in the region is just outside Oxford, at least according to the internet. Details on how a local pizza shop won state recognition when we're back. I'm Kat Bojack and this is the Oxford Weekly News. $4.8 million in bonds for funding the new Oxford Aquatic Center will be voted on at the next City Council meeting on March 5th. If passed, those bonds will be paid off by 2020 from property tax revenue. Construction crews have been working since August of 2018 to complete the project. The Aquatic Center will feature two large pools and a lazy river. The City expects for the project to come in under budget. At this point it looks like it may be a little less than that, but we'll have a firmer grasp on that in a couple weeks. It'll probably be a little bit less than 4.8, but not too much. The new Aquatic Center is set to open on May 25th of this year. Oxford Popular High Street is about to get a makeover. The street will go under major construction in the spring of 2020 to enhance safety uptown by adding medians in the street for pedestrians to cross. When completed, High Street will have a similar design to the newly redone Patterson Avenue. The project is expected to cost $1.27 million and is expected to be finished by August of 2020. The League of Geeks is hosting its fourth annual free convention recon on February 22nd to the 24th. Geeks gather in the Armstrong Student Center for three days to play games, attend panels, and show off their trivia knowledge. New this year is their performance guest musician Jonathan Colton, a live action D&D &D game, LGBTQ panels, and a cosplay contest. Attendees can win prizes by playing games and attending events. The event starts Friday, February 22nd at 7 p.m. in the Armstrong Student Center. Ohio weather, usually a punchline, but not for the National Weather Service, who will be training volunteer weather spotters for the Oxford area. The program helps the region's forecasters stationed in Wilmington, Ohio, confirm and track severe weather systems such as tornadoes, hail, and extreme wind across southwestern Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky an area covering 52 counties. The program is on February 25th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Athletic Performance Center near My the Miami University football stadium. A big honor for the small town restaurant. Riley Pizza, a small restaurant located about five miles from Miami's campus, was recently named one of the best pizza places in the United States in an article published on onlyinyourstate.com. Since the publication of the article, which has been shared over 200 times on Facebook, it has also received a spike in new customers, according to restaurant management. That's all for this week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kat Bojack. You can watch us online at our YouTube channel, search Oxford Weekly News. Also connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Oxford Weekly News.